Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to Rock Video Rental. I am Brandon and with me as always is Caleb. And we are going to be wrapping up Awesomely Bad Month with Batman and Robin. Uh, we also have a special guest for this episode, so stick around when we start that. But uh, before we get to that, we do like we always do. And Caleb, what have you been watching? Bob's Burgers. Um, <laughs> that's that's the most of it. Um, wow, I am blanking because I thought there was something else I watched. Oh, yes, there was something else I watched. Um, Self-Reliance. Um, that's uh Jake Johnson who plays Nick from New Girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh he had a movie and I think he directed this too. Um and it's a movie about um there's like uh the dark web has different shows, like reality shows, and so they go around and they recruit people and say, Hey, if you can stay alive for 30 days, we'll pay you a million dollars or some. Yeah, absurd I think amount. I saw like the preview for that. Yeah, the it was, the trailer was everywhere for like a week or two. Um, and so I watched it. It, it was OK. The the end, because really the way that things were going was just kind of like, OK, is this going to be something where it's real or is this going to be something where like the state of his mind is just like going and he's kind of like creating stuff in his head um th the end was kind of anticlimactic i was a little disappointed by it like i i see the full circle i see what happened and what what the point was and what was going on but just didn't uh it didn't have a good solid finish but it was entertaining um so i watched that that was something that my wife and i watched the only other kind of interesting thing that i've caught a little bit of is that my wife is watching married at first sight uh, okay and so i see some of those episodes which are absurd and i don't really watch those shows anyway <laughs> yeah i've watched a fair amount of that show yeah i mean it, it's got its entertainment value but i don't really like i have my curiosity where it's just like oh if i see what happens at the beginning i'll be like oh you know, if somebody's seen the whole thing, do they stay together? No. Okay, cool. I'm good. Like, I don't <laughs> I don't need to know all the drama between point A and point B. Right. But Did it just... work? No. Okay, I'm done. All right, thanks. I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah. But that's pretty much it, so. Rock. Um, We're still watching some Grey's Anatomy. Not really much to say there. Uh, also watching King of the Hill, not much to say there. Uh, I did watch the latest Dark Side of the Ring episode is on Sensational Sherry. Uh, that was pretty good. I kind of knew a little bit about her anyway, but it was just kind of interesting to see hear like some of the more in-depth stuff. But again, another sad episode because she did end up dying. So, yeah. <clears throat> and then I watched a few movies. I watched a Kevin Costner movie Draft Day. Okay. Uh, where he's he plays like the the GM of the Cleveland Browns. And it's like the NFL draft and he's making all these trades and stuff and it's incredibly unrealistic, but it's entertaining. <laughs> yeah, just the greatest football team to, you know, represent there. Oh yeah. Oh, what else? I watched the movie Late Night with the Devil. And that was really good. It was a really clever and interesting take on a possession movie. Okay. It was presented in a completely different way as a uh, 1970s late night talk show. Kind of like Johnny Carson. Okay. Where they have like a different acts on there. And <clears throat> it's like they got a, uh, like a ma magician and then they got someone who claims to be like a medium. And then they have this one guy who's like a skeptic. And they bring him on to talk to like this girl who like claims to be possessed. And then it's like shit hits the fan and it goes crazy. Uh, it was pretty good. It was definitely worth a watch. Huh. Yeah. And it's kind of a low budget movie. And okay. I don't know. Like it, it's, there's not really any big name actors you're going to see in there. But yeah, it was really good. Uh, and then I watched a an episode of Joe Bob's Last Drive-In. 
I watched the David Cronenberg rat movie Rabid. Oh, that was the first time watched for me, and that one's pretty interesting. Uh, if you know anything about David Cronenberg, he likes to use like weird body horror. Oh, but, like yeah. this one is like a woman gets some kind of like parasite or something, some kind of disease, and she's got like this weird thing that comes out of her armpit and like feeds on people. What? It's like a tentacle thing that comes out and like sucks the life out of people and they turn into like these infected like rage zombies. Just keep your arm down, lady. <laughs> Except like she's it's almost like she's like a like a host to this parasite that controls her mind or something. Oh sure, yeah. I, yeah, I, it's, I, I mean it's a David Cronenberg movie. They're weird. <laughs> he did the remake of the thing with Jeff Goldblum in it. Okay. And that's probably one of his tamer movies. <laughs> We might have to cover one of his movies in a October marathon sometime because he's got some pretty interesting stuff. Um, and then I think that's that's pretty much it, other than odds and ends of YouTube stuff, but nothing of really any mention. But I did watch Batman and Robin, and it might be the most awesomely bad Batman movie ever made. So let's bring Craig on with us and we will talk about it. Batman and Robin is from 1996 and is directed by Joel Schumacher. Uh, the plot is Batman and Robin try to keep their relationship together even as they must stop Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy from freezing Gotham City. Uh, the cast, we got George Clooney as Batman, Chris O'Donnell as Robin, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy, Pat Hingle as Commissioner Gordon, Michael Goh as Alfred, Elle McPherson in a kind of a surprisingly small role as Julie Madison, Vivica A. Fox as the terribly named Miss Behaven, <laughs> Jeep Swenson as Bane, and John Glover as Dr. Woodrow. I was trying to remember last week if I saw this in theater. Uh, I asked my brother if we saw it in theater, and he said he knows he didn't because he thought it was going to be dumb <laughs> with George Clooney as Batman. Uh, but he's like, you might have. And I'm like, well, that didn't really help me too much. But <laughs> I know I've seen this before. I can say that. Yeah, I've seen it I... once or twice. So, But, uh, yeah, I mean, we've got uh, somebody with a little bit more personal experience with that joining us <laughs> this week. <laughs> Yeah, Craig, did you say you saw this in the theater back in the day? Do we have to do this, guys? <laughs> you are the one who's going to have the best insight. We need we need yeah. the wisdom and the knowledge. Yeah, Joel Schumacher, God rest his soul, died a couple years ago, probably from this movie. I don't know. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do have like some history with this movie. It might take a. I don't know. You know, if you guys are ready for the story, I guess you, <laughs> yeah. you're ready. So, sorry if it's a little long winded, but um, well, ba basically, well, basically, in, in 1996, my wife and I got married, and so we uh, uh we got hired at a uh, apparel company down in uh, Tennessee called Signal Apparel. But when we were down there, when we first got there, we were started doing designs for a lot of um you know, colleges and things like that. And sometimes we do other things. Um, one of them was, uh, that's, I think Space Jam was the big movie at that time, <laughs> Jordan. So we just started working on that as soon as we got there. So I didn't know what I was doing. And um, about a year later, we get this spec sheet and kind of like a strike off. And the strike off had all the Batman like poses and I was like, huh, well, it's not Val Kilner. We know that. It's not Michael Keaton. <laughs> so who is it this time? I look, and I go, it's just a white background. And they're just standing, like, front. 
profile and back of them all just kind of standing there and mm -hmm. and it's you can see you know obviously it's george george clooney and the rest and just off the spec sheet I, we all started just laughing just because george clooney looked horrible as batman <laughs> i mean he's a good looking dude right he kind of looks like the part you know and so i'm going yeah, it's yeah. strange so we get the spec sheet and we're gonna have to come up with some designs for this particular movie so and we weren't really thrilled about it but uh, we we're like all right cool and we're we had free tickets to the movie so we're like this is great we can go during the day and <laughs> we get free popcorn they're gonna smooth us and all and we're like okay cool so we decided to uh take the group the group of artists and we decided to go to the movie and watch this movie and i don't know if you guys remember the very first part of the scene it's like dark and they got this like light shining on their suits oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first thing i saw well, one was the bat nipples and then i just started laughing my head off <laughs> and then there's a part where they literally like zoomed around around the buttocks yeah they zoomed uh -huh. right out of george clooney's ass <laughs> and there's like a little shake like you know what i mean <laughs> it started shaking it was like a little wiggle there and i just laughed my head off and the suit was kind of ridiculous and during the movie we we're just i think we we're just laughing how bad it was because i think they just overly paid all these actors <laughs> uh -huh. so much money and then the very fact is you know and things certain things during the movie i just i, I decided that when i walked out that out of that movie said one it was the most big budgeted movie is horrible and then i had to go back to work and have to deal with this movie still <laughs> <laughs> right i'm like i can wipe it from my brain but i gotta go back to work and draw stuff but um and then the very fact is somebody goes what'd you think of me i said well god it was god awful given the budget and the movie and the actors they had to pay and then I started saying, he, I said, well, you know, remind me of, they said, what? It, it, it would have been a good Batman on ice. If you, <laughs> yeah. If you want to do a show and it was like, you know, and they're like skating around on ice. I thought it'd be great, <laughs> but that wasn't the intention. So yeah, that's my backstory with that particular movie. And I hated it ever since. So <laughs> yeah. See, I thought of the Batman on ice thing too, in the first scene. You know, after they get their suits on and then they start fighting Mr. Freeze and his henchmen of hockey players. When Batman and Robin get knocked down and all of a sudden skates pop out of their boots. <laughs> Very Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Click them together and they just pop out. I was like, oh my gosh, it's like Batman on ice. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that actually brings up a decent point. I mean, honestly, out of all the Batman movies, this does feel like it was like disney fied or like really dumbed down it was like the 60s batman with adam west except without the charm i felt like in parts oh yeah absolutely uh i recognize some of the like sound effects and stuff yeah, yeah good point yeah absolutely caleb the sound effects were just horrible like and, you know and then the one-liners kind of got to me too i was like are you kidding me <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure Arnold just ad libbed every single line he had. They're just it's like they handed him his suit. They're like, okay, just go out there and say what you want. It's like remember you're Mr. Freeze and he he's just like, ah, uh, um ice, um the obstacles. Ice <laughs> yeah. Time to kick ice. Yeah. Or something like that. <laughs> Everybody chill. <laughs> right. Right. Well, you know, a funny thing is it's such a far cry from the comics because I collect quite a bit of comics and, you know, and, and the characters are just like, you know, a joke. And, you know, Mr. Freeze is actually a very thin guy and, you know, he didn't start off like that. He started off with uh, some an, a different name than Dr. Uh, Mr. Freeze. So and they just change it later on. But uh, all those characters were just like and then. Yeah, I said, you know, Uma Thurman, obviously, pretty lady, and she kind of fit the profile a bit. But uh, and then you get the Bane, and I just start laughing. I just like Nacho <laughs> Libre kind of. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, he was just a complete idiot, too. And Bane in the the cartoon and the... Smart. Uh, yeah, and even in, you know, the Dark Knight movie, like, that he was in. Like, yeah, he was super smart and super strong. Yeah. Yeah. So and yeah, and he basically juiced up. They got him on, you know, steroid juice and veins popping out of every 
muscle or whatever muscle he had but um and then the very fact is that he didn't even talk i think he just said bang or what i don't know something to the he thing. would just repeat things like a caveman in this movie yeah. <laughs> so and the guy like, that the what guy... do you guys think of george clooney as batman i mean oh. here. yeah i don't know like it's i like george clooney usually like he's kind of a charismatic guy and he, like you said he's a good looking dude but he just doesn't fit batman for me I I could see it, but it just this movie had so much working against it. He I don't know. He didn't really help it because especially when he was Bruce Wayne, he he yeah. was Bruce Wayne. Like he totally fit Bruce Wayne, and oh, I yeah. saw him as Batman. Like I could see it. He's not exactly the most uh, physically intimidating guy as like Christian Bale got or something like that, but. It, it was there, but I, there was just way too much working against him and not saying like, oh, he was the one bright shining star of this at all. But I could have believed it, but the circumstance just didn't give him anything to stand on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was like you said, Gabby, right, right on when he's Bruce Wayne. He's, I thought he was great. I mean, he looked, he looked the part, act the part, look rich. He looked like all those things, but it, <laughs> It was a combination of everything. The director to all the theatrics, like you said, it was like a Disney production, you know, and it kind of killed the whole vibe. So as soon as he puts a suit on it, I'm like, it's like glitzy and all kinds of just bad, <laughs> bad all around. <laughs> the bat nipples. <laughs> right. All the well, butt even, shots. Even Mr. Movie. Freeze had like boobs. Yeah. Or, like, oh, yeah. Glowing. <laughs> Like glowing chest, uh, I don't know. It like it looked really weird. But it's Arnold that they're packs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the back in. <laughs> the thing too with like talking about all these um, movie stars that were in this film is just like they had way too much going on. Mm. Like the you didn't just have Batman; you had Batman and Robin. And then you didn't just have Batman and Robin. You also had Alfred who was dying. And then you didn't just have Alfred who was dying. You had his niece who showed up to become Batgirl. And then you don't just have one bad guy in Mr. Freeze. You also have Poison Ivy. And you have to give them both like a development backstory. And, and then, then there's oh, also Bane. <laughs> yeah, let's throw Bane into the mix too. It's like This was oh, basically like Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 made the same mistake. Oh, yeah. very dude, so such a good comparison. That's actually yeah. a great comparison. Yeah, there's yeah. too much going on. This one tried to be a little more like campy and you know, harken back to the the 60s back Batman, which was a a fun series. I used to watch it with my dad all the time. But it just coming off from you know, Tim Burton's Batman, then Batman Returns, and even Batman Forever. It was just a big change in tone. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and the very fact is, yeah, Caleb's dead on. It's just like too many characters, and Bane was pretty much what Uma Thurman's pet. He really wasn't in the, you know, I don't know what he was in there for, but yeah, too many characters and too many like significant characters too, based on comics. I mean, these are big time characters that you're trying to give some kind of shed light to and they just i mean even joel schumacher the director said he, he apologized for this movie so it's not just <laughs> the fan you know uh, people out there i go how can you even the director didn't thought you know it was not a good movie so i don't know it it's just they had too much going on there's too many things just with this movie so i'm not the biggest superhero movie fan I mean, I liked them when they were more sporadic, like you would get one a year or something like that, because then it made it special. But Marvel really did it the right way, where basically each character had their own developing movie for the most part. Mm -hmm. And then they brought them all together. Instead, where this one, they were trying to do basically everything in one movie, as you so pointed out, Brandon, um, kind of like what Spider-Man 3 did, where, yeah, you knew Spider-Man, but then they threw so many people in one movie. It's like, here's Green Goblin, here's Sandman, here's Venom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when right. Venom deserved his own movie. Oh, totally. Because he's such a beloved character. Yeah. And so this, it, it just, this tried doing what Marvel did like a couple decades earlier and just 
I, I wouldn't be too surprised if Marvel looked at him and was just like, hey, how do we avoid this? <laughs> Right. This is put that up on the whiteboard. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I thought when I watched the latest Spider Man movie, I'm like, oh man, are they gonna fall into the trap of having too many characters because they had the the two other Spider Men. Yeah. Yeah. In there. Okay. But that, that movie was actually pretty fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. It was good. Well, well done. Well, part of that too was they brought in a lot of people you already knew. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you didn't have to be like, oh, what's what's this story and what's going on with this? It's just like, oh, yeah, he was from the other one. And even if you didn't see all the other movies, you had at least a, a little context to be like, OK, this is the bad guy from this universe. That's enough to at least like understand the story. So, yeah, there's always like Spider-Man with the lizard. He had his own movie that Spider-Man, gets, um, you know. uh some of the other characters, Green Goblin, they had their own little. It, so you kind of grew up with them. So yeah, you're right. It, the same with Marvel. I mean, you got to know the characters first, and then you get to know their uh, villains. I, look, and I always said, you know, I said this to my kids and, and and my boys. I said, you know, one of the best ways you know you have a really good movie, uh, especially a, you know any kind of comic movie, is to have. Fall, actually like the villain better than the actual hero when you had mm-hmm. when you do that i said man you got a great movie if you try if you have a horrible villain and it's just nothing i go you don't have a good movie he said mm-hmm. nobody it's just yeah go. that's true I even think about it with like star wars yeah like uh-huh. every like everybody loves darth vader <laughs> uh, D- dark knight the joker yeah. Yep. Then even if you think of like the old slasher movies, you got Jason and Michael and Freddy. Yep. Villain. <laughs> yep. It's strange, you know, and you know, people even the the Marvel movie with Thanos, I actually like I was actually that movie's more about him than it was about the Avengers. So it's kind of you know, it was really appealing one of my and it was a great movie. So it's mm-hmm. uh yeah, and this movie just got lost in the in the lights. It, it, I didn't even know where it was shot. It felt like I was like in a small studio and they just kind of it didn't feel like nothing was just like shot outside right it felt like a universal studios ride at times. <laughs> yes especially absolutely. that that beginning with all the skating around and the what was that like an antique exhibit at a museum <laughs> yeah. or something like that yeah and the, all the guys skating the around with, with hockey sticks that are blades and yeah, oh, there's also a the scene that I noticed the too. The moat the moat going by and looking like it small. It's a small world. Or oh something. yeah. yeah. <laughs> one yeah. thing I noticed when he, Mister Freeze, sent the henchmen after Batman and Robin at the beginning, where they're skating around, is they skate past Batman and Robin, and then they turn around and they come back, and there's a shot from up above, and two of the guys run into each other. <laughs> <laughs> Like I saw that this time, and I started laughing. I was like, "What if anybody noticed that?" <laughs> Joel Schumacher probably didn't even notice it. Okay, now I gotta go see that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they uh, they do. I mean, at first, I was just thinking that it, some of it was kind of coincidental and wasn't, you know, super over deliberate. But the fact that they made the henchmen so doofy, yeah like the adam west batman age like it just they i don't know i i'm not sure if it was a thought on like oh let's gear this more to be kid friendly or if it was supposed to be a homage thing but it just was really flat i thought somewhat stylistically i think it was mostly with the um the fake environment when they did the shots of the uh, observatory and things like that, where Gotham was like this huge advanced city and was just like buildings on top of buildings that they kind of had a cool thing going on. But that's the only time you got that feeling. Cause exactly as you said, it almost felt like a universal studio setup. Yeah. And like a show in front of an audience. Yeah. It's pretty similar to, one of the last movies we did with Congo mm-hmm. where they had that scene at the end inside the cave, how it just didn't feel like a real place. It yeah. felt like you were in a warehouse that was dressed up. Mm-hmm. And that's what and, a lot of this movie felt like. 
Yeah, that, well, not to go back and talk about Congo, but that I think was a lot about lighting, though, too. It just felt unnatural. Yeah. 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 Same with this, felt like there were spotlights, like lights hanging up in the rafters and things like that. <laughs> um, well, didn't Schumacher do like Lost Boys and all the, those kind of cool movies like that? Did yeah, he, he that? did. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are great movies. So I don't know what happened with this. I think it's not, it's almost like he got thrusted into this and thought, you know, like Caleb was saying, it's like, it's almost like they were like, well, Hey, you know what? I want I wanted it to be for kids, but yet I don't. <laughs> so yeah. they were like confused. So it's just, it's like he was trying to please everybody and then ended up pleasing no one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. well, the one, one element that really kind of annoyed me, um, that I, I don't know. I mean, it's so many things in this just did not really support or reinforce the movie or bring any solid value. But the I don't even know exactly how to say it, but how they were constantly using poison ivies like a womanizing power, feminine power over men. Yeah. Thing and the theromones and th- I like I get the concept, but it started getting annoying at one point and it made me I mean, first of all, I wasn't really a huge fan, but I really hated Robin like throughout this whole movie. Oh yeah, he's a total horn dog during the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, and he's like a Chad. It's just like, dude, like eventually they kind of come to their senses and they're like, Oh, something weird is going on. And then two seconds later he's like, You just want poison ivy. I hate you. I'm going out on my own. It's like, gosh, like, where did this come from, right? Yeah, it's like, man, yeah, he was like, he was like a petulant, like preteen or something. In this, I was waiting for him to stomp his feet and storm off to the back cave. <laughs> well, yeah, even at the beginning, I want a car. Chicks dig the car. <laughs> it was like suits laying around everywhere. It was like, you know, they're, I'm gonna make a girl suit just in case, a bat suit, a bat boy suit just in case, and they're finding <laughs> all these suits. I'm going. Anybody can be a Batman, I guess, in this movie. So it's just so weird, <laughs> right? And yeah, how many different suits did they have? Yeah, because right? I know for sure they're wearing different suits at the at the end. Yeah, I mean exactly, and that's the thing is like some of the some of the best movies are like you know going into not only do these characters have really cool suits in the comics, but you know how did they build them, and you know how do they get to a point to where they're you know they actually become the character we know so that's Mm -hmm. building off that is always great i mean iron man's i would say probably one of my favorite ones of all because the very fact is him just in a cave he's trapped he's kidnapped and he's got to figure out a way to build the suit and that's how we started off with mach one so it's mark one so and mark one is just a you know dumpy little tin (laughs) suit but yeah that he builds in a cave right yeah, so, and same with the suit. It's like none of these characters did just seem to pop up and have their own suits. I mean, you didn't have – Chris O'Donnell didn't say, hey, you know what? I'd like to join you and I can fight, or maybe he was training him to fight or things like that. There was no relationship. They just was. So Yeah, I think it was re- relying heavily on people seeing Batman Forever because <laughs> that's when Robin shows up as in Batman Forever. I mean, it's been – forever since i've seen that movie (laughs) but i remember seeing that one in the theater because i remember jim carrey as a riddler Mm, yeah and that's right and um tommy lee jones is two-faced and yeah 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 Yeah. so yeah i don't this one was just um, so edible because the very i think because of all the budget went to the actors is how much he had to pay those people to be on there oh yeah you guys think he was trying to get everybody to the theater just based on the very fact is um, the actors that he bought, you know, were there. Like, you're like, Oh wow. George Clooney. Oh my gosh. Human Thurman. Oh my word. You know, all oh, man, an Arnold. Oh, yeah. Oh, Schwarzenegger. I mean, this has got to be good. Right. And it, no. Yeah, no. I mean, I remember being excited. Um, when I uh, like, I thought it was going to be cool. I thought it was going to be interesting. I didn't see it in theaters, but I was looking forward to seeing it. And I was like, wow. Like, I mean, I think I remember it being fun, but it wasn't like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I would I was, still say I was that, like 10. 
while I didn't it's know anything. <laughs> not like the greatest movie, it does have some fun moments in it. I guess it doesn't take itself too seriously. I mean, it could be a, a lot better movie, but it was entertaining. I'll say that. I wasn't like super bored in it. Yeah, and it's it's weird how we came from, and that's why Tim Burton's Batman seemed to work. It it was campy, but Tim Burton in a way that it worked really really well because it's almost like a throwback to the old, like you're saying, the Batmans of the old with them, and somehow it worked for that because it was campy. And you had you know I had Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton was kind of coming around, so and that worked. But somehow this one tried to be campy, but it it and was trying to be serious at the same time. And I don't think Tim Burton's version was trying to be. So yeah, it worked really well. It's well. in that Tim Burton world that's kind of surreal as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I'd say other than the weird tone of this movie, the worst part about it is the dialogue. Some of that dialogue need to be rewritten. There's so many like terrible lines in it. The what it really so to be, and I was laughing at it so hard is when, um, uh, all the cops is towards the end, and all the cops are coming after, uh, Mister Freeze, and then he like, oh, what is it? He like switches the room to like cold or something like that, and all the cops are like falling down. And they can't breathe. And one cop yells, not my lungs. God, my lungs are freezing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, who yells, not my lungs, and grabs their chest? <laughs> they all do. Yeah. Oh, man. Sorry, was it like, what What was one of the lines? Like, so sorry, my vines have a crush on you or something. I don't know, but... <laughs> By <laughs> all the one liners, yeah. <laughs> I mean, 95% of them are from Arnold. Pretty much everything he says is a one liner, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, unless just Silverstone was just lost in this, and I mean, we go back to what Caleb's comment was, it was just like, why I don't understand why. You, okay, you want a sidekick, great, let's put Robin in it, awesome, but why do you have to put the back girl in it? It's like, why? It, it, there's no reason for it. I mean, why it was is too much. There? You want it, to know the best thing about the back girl thing? Why didn't she have an accent? <laughs> if, yeah. she was, if she was born in England and, like, his <laughs> niece and attended Oxford, like, yeah. it shouldn't, I mean, I'm unless they didn't share the part where she moved to the U.S. or something. Like there was nothing that was saying that she shouldn't have an accent. Yeah, they could have explained it away, like they did with Van Damme's accent in every movie he's in. <laughs> they could have just said, "Oh, she was actually born in the United States. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. why she doesn't have a British accent." <laughs> but I mean, at least at least Alicia Silverstone wasn't talking like a Valley Girl, like in Clueless. Right. Oh gosh, <laughs> I still didn't buy her as being super crazy smart like she was no yeah exactly i mean well that's the thing about robin i was just like you know he's always kind of a sidekick i guess but you know him storming off a lot in that movie was just like he was like a brat and i guess it's going back to the old school what was the 60s 70s batman they're trying to do it where he was a little punk kid in a way so (laughs) I, it looked like Schumacher was really trying to derive a lot of it from the very or, original show. Yeah. It just didn't work. So, yeah, you almost wait for him to say, Holy frozen police officers, Batman. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that. <laughs> Those right. liners. <laughs> and then when they punch somebody, the Kapow, did they do a Kapow like thing on that movie? They no, did some so. of the sounds. Okay. It was like, uh, you did a Zocco to flash like, up on the screen. Wow. Yeah, but no, no words and everything. It totally. I would, would, have, uh, I would have loved that. Yeah. I would have said, you know, and I get it then. And, you know, put the yeah. words in there, and I would have gotten it. And I would have said, okay, this is supposed to be campy and fun. I understand it now, but you didn't. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah, terrible movie. And Bane was just, you know, like we said, I don't know what he was. He was just kind of there. He was more like the Hulk. Yeah. Or like. <laughs> Thing or something like he wasn't the brightest guy 
Yeah, and then their little rendition of Bane, they decided, you know, I think the next time they were going to do Bane, they said, yeah, we're going to scrap the sweatiness. Like, you look like you sweat <laughs> all the time in that movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's in a hot suit or I don't know. It was just weird, all the tubes and stuff. But it's like, we're not going to do it like that. We're going to get somebody else to do him and we're going to make him smart. And they did. So, yeah, oh, the yeah. actor they had for um, Bane was a former wrestler. Uh, yeah. He was in WCW for a little bit. His name was the oh, Ultimate really? Solution. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when they defeated Bane, it was like the most simple, dumbest thing. Let's grab uh, this big hose. Yeah, just grab the hose on the back of his head and pull it out. Like <laughs> nobody else could have done that. It took a superhero to figure that out and to do that. What if he was walking around and caught it on the door or something? <laughs> exactly. I think it was sticking out about five feet of back, from the back of its head almost. <laughs> Kind of hook, right? <laughs> Might want to tie that down or something. <laughs> some zip ties. Let's fix it. Exactly. exactly. Oh man, you want to talk about campy stuff? How about the bat card? The Batman yeah. credit card. Oh gosh, I never leave the cave without it. And I just wrote, "Kill me." <laughs> <laughs> I remember that commercial. They turned that oh. part into a commercial back in the day, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. I do remember that. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, and then I love all the renditions of somebody did a whole trip, like, a, I don't know, maybe a 10, eight to 10 panel thing of all the Batman cars. And they had the uh, Batman and Robin. I couldn't stand it. I was just like, this is the worst one. Why? Because the movie <laughs> horrible. So <laughs> I don't care if the car, you could at least made the car cool. And. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's kind of interesting to bring up because actually at the very beginning, the two things that the set, set the tone for the movie was, Craig, what you already mentioned about how like they did butt shots during like the yeah. whole like <laughs> suit intro thing. But then immediately following that, they had the cool like, oh, here comes the bat car up from up in the cave and everything. And then Robin's just like, I want a car. Chicks dig the car. And it's just yeah. like. The, and that and that right there just set the tone for the whole entire movie. Right? Yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden, boom, they're fighting Mr. Freeze, not even five minutes into the movie. Yeah. Yeah. No build up at all. Like no, no origin. Like you know what you're in for with this right. movie. And and it was 15 minutes. It was like a 15 minute fight. <laughs> like they didn't waste any time. They spent a ton of time. And I mean, like, yeah, that's the thing. It was kind of fun. Like if if it was going in the right direction and all fit, but just it didn't fit and ah uh, man i don't know it was it was disappointing you know it's always too bad uh because i mean well let's face it dc's always struggled for the most part outside of batman and so to see batman do so poorly is just like a gut punch yeah just you know having i think i have like two two to three long boxes of comics so i have quite a few of them but DC is always known for storytelling, not really based on uh, the comics or, or the hero itself as far as way they look and stuff. They have really good storytelling, better than Marvel at times. But um, but yeah, that's iconic Batman and all his villains. But everybody loves the villain over the hero at times. And And yeah, you're right. It just becomes this thing where I'm like, you guys made him into a clown show and he's not, he's not that way. He's, you know, kind of like the dark Knight, And that's why they came up with a different version. They said, oh, yeah, we're going to go all dark on this one. Do use Christian Bale who some people knew, but not a lot of people. So it's, it worked. So mm -hmm. without the gravelly voice, I mean, I could have done without that. But. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh gosh. I mean, what did you guys think, like, if you say George Clooney, I mean, if you think about George Clooney as Batman, you go, oh, yeah, yeah, that kind of fits. But would you ever say Val Kilmer is Batman, though? I mean, if you compare the two, it's like, huh, how did Val Kilmer do so well, better? Because Val Kilmer is a way better actor than George Clooney. That's true. I'll say <laughs> that Val Kilmer is a very underrated actor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just strange how that one did really well. And then the other ones did not. So Yeah, seeing that he's been the only blonde Batman, too. Yeah, I think if you had put George Clooney in 
Val Kilmer's Batman, I think he would have done fine. I agree. Yeah. He would not have uh, done as well as Val Kilmer, um, in my opinion, but I think he would have been considered a success compared to this monstrosity. <laughs> At least it wasn't Tom Cruise. <laughs> oh, <God>. A pocket-sized <laughs> Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he keep wanting to run? You got a Batmobile. <laughs> his, his cape would have been like a, some kind of wedding. <laughs> the wedding topper cape. The wedding train. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he could have, uh, it, he would have made a great Robin. He's Robin size. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why. That's true. I mean, Michael Keaton's was well, too. He was really. He did really, really well for the time because, you know, there was there was this really long, 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 maybe a couple of decades or from the Batman show to Batman coming out and actually having a full length movie and Tim Burton taking that on. That was a big deal. I mean, and so when he took it on, you kind of saw the lighting. He said, hey, we got Jack Nicholson as a Joker and that's it. And. Big, you know, pretty good budget, and it looked dark, which had a dark quality, and that's Tim Burton for you, right? Yeah. And it just, you know, it worked really well. And then, like you said, they did so well that they just did a spinoff and started just throwing them out there. And I said, mm, you might want to we'll let some time go by and, and think about this. So. Yeah, and then Michael Keaton, he was mostly known for – um comedies at the time yeah he had a strew of those too didn't like he? mr mom and yep yep uh, and Red juice and yeah johnny dangerously <laughs> yeah underrated movie go see it so <laughs> we did that one time on the show <laughs> so yeah and he he seemed to work it worked too because you got a guy who's known for comedy and then he kind of does that well it's similar to tom hanks too so but um you know, he he did really, really well. It's just, it was strange to go, you know, once in a while you see a poll that says, who's your favorite Batman? They start doing the, Mike, you know, Michael Keaton. They say Val Kilmer. They'll say George Clooney. And then they'll say Christian Bale. And then, of course, now what, Patrick is the new Batman. So, but it is interesting to see what people say. But, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as far as the look of Mr. Freeze, like you said, Craig, he didn't really look like Mr. Freeze in the comics or even like the 90s cartoon series. Because Mr. Freeze was always kind of a, a slim guy. And I could have been okay with Arnold being him. I mean, I like Arnold, and he brings like a different version of Mr. Freeze. And I, I thought a suit was okay looking, but it's just the constant ice puns. It's... Like everything on him is blue. His eyes are blue. His face is blue. The inside of his mouth and his teeth are blue. I was like, yeah. they just have Arnold eating like blue raspberry blow pops or something all day. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some blue Kool Aid. Now your mouth again. LED lights all over inside his suit. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty bad. But yeah, he's a very slender guy. Very, he's very, actually a great character. But you know, um, he kind of reminds me of a. He looks like a young, young, um, the guy I played, I uh, forgot, um, uh, in the X-Men, balded guy. But, oh, uh, Professor X? Yeah, Professor X, but it reminds me of him, but younger, a younger version of him. He would have been great and thin and tall. And kind of like um, Michael Rosenbaum as, as Lex mm -hmm. in Smallville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Kind of a thin guy with bald head, yeah. Well, any of those people you could have gotten, but you know, it's just you know you try to get you say Arnold, okay, cool, but then you go, are you going to buy Mister Freeze having that kind of accent? <laughs> hey, we were robbed of Arnold as Batman. Come on, That's <laughs> right? right. <laughs> yeah, Oof, man. I know. Oh yeah, Nicholas Cage is uh, Superman too. He was. <laughs> yes. that too. Oh man, <laughs> it was supposed to tie in with this if they made a sequel. Uh wow. Yeah. 
I think the last thing I had that I thought was was kind of rough, <laughs> and it only popped up a few times, but it reminded me of something. Of uh, those newscasts that they had, mm. the woman that was talking talked like she was introducing something more than like telling a news story. What it reminded me of is Casino, the live from the Tangiers Hotel. Aces, <laughs> hi. <laughs> nice. That's all I could think of. Uh, the diamond was stolen from the uh, the antique wing of the museum. <laughs> yeah, but who is this? Yeah. Yeah, it's too many characters, too many things going on. Big budget. You threw all your money for these actors to try to get people into the seats, the butts in the seats, and it tanked. And then we made this movie two hours long, and that was unnecessary. Was it really that too long? Yeah. Too long? Yeah. I kind of wondered too if they had the issue of just like not feeling like they could control all of the actors. <laughs> just let them go. Well, like, I'm not going to say anything to Arnold. Yeah. Well, because I mean, you have, I mean, you are spending so much money and you have so many big personalities. Like, I can only imagine that, you know, there were some issues that came up. So that who knows how they tried to handle all that. Yeah, you pay me this much, I need this much screen time. Yeah. Like, yeah. You pay me this much, I need this much screen time. No. Oh. <laughs> Arnold, I got to have my name above the title of the movie. <laughs> but you're the villain. I don't care. <laughs> well, you could have like, got, like, okay, let's say you have all the characters. You could have gotten... Let's say, oh, all right, we got George Clooney nailed down. All right, great. Well, and then you're getting Chris down. And I think he was at the point where they wanted to get him because he's Nate. He was kind of like the big actor at that time. He's yeah, kind he of, was kind of taken off. Right. Yeah. And so was it was Silverstone, too. You know, she kind yeah. of was taken off. So they, and I go, you could have, you could have said, okay, well, who's the main, who's the main villain in this movie? Okay, let's focus on that. Let's go, okay, we got, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Let's say he's the big villain. In fact, in the marquee in the on the poster, he's the biggest one in there. So, all right, you're gonna pay him. Why don't you just get people who are just kind of up and coming actors and people who are nobodies? You don't need Alicia Silverstone as Batwoman or whatever. You could have gotten a no name even for Chris O'Donnell. You could have gotten a no name for uh, Poison Ivy or a few of those other people and just had. Clooney against Arnold Schwarzenegger and had that, but they didn't. <laughs> so very strange. Yep. Yeah, agreed. Also, Jesse Ventura's in this movie. Really? <laughs> yeah, he was one of the guards. I can oh, say Mr. Yeah. Freeze takes out because <laughs> Mr. Freeze was you know, allow me to break the ice. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what he says. The name is Freeze. Know it well. <laughs> like that whole thing is lame and then he knocks over um jesse ventura and the other guy yeah, yeah as soon as i heard that. as soon as i heard the voice i'm like oh there's jesse <laughs> <laughs> i can see that from the predator days right <laughs> so, yeah using his buddies as whatever so i don't know I, it, the casting was just i'd like to know the process of that whole thing I don't know if Joel Schumacher even talked about that, but it would have been interesting to see the whole process on why them, you know, why so many stars. Yeah. When you could have had, you know, two, two or three stars and then the rest could have been people that are just, you know, there and up and coming and want a good acting job. And um, I don't know. a little strange. Yep. Uh, you guys got anything else to add, or do you want me to get into the trivia and facts? I don't think I have anything else important. Okay. Yeah, if anybody wants to go see it, hey, that's you know, good. Good on <laughs> you, man. That's it. <laughs> Props. Uh, so the trivia and facts. Um, there was a whole bunch of stuff in this. Some of them were just really kind of pointless. So I just kind of picked a few that I liked. Um, so in later interviews, Joel Schumacher blamed studio pressure to make the film more toyetic, a.k.a. like a showcase for marketable toys and games. Uh, he apologized to disappointed fans. 
Uh, so George Clooney, Clooney has actually been known to refund people who saw the movie. <laughs> Which oh, so they're me. all now saying, oh, jeez. Yeah. So uh, what, you need your ticket stub or something? I guess. <laughs> I have my ticket stub from 1996. Give me my $3. <laughs> With interest. Uh, so Mr. Freeze says 27 ice-related puns through the movie. Uh, that seems small. It's yeah. more than that. <laughs> oh, uh, oh wow! So according to jo- Doctor, uh, sorry, according to John Glover, who played Doctor Woodrow, um, Joel Schumacher would sit on a crane with a megaphone and yell before each take. Remember, everyone, this is a cartoon. It was hard to act because that kind of set the tone for the movie. He said, "Yeah, um, well, that makes sense." Yeah, it does. In an interview with the cast members, um, they were asked what item they would like to take home from the movie. Arnold said he would be taking Mr. Freeze's armor home. Uma Thurman said that she wanted Poison Ivy's floral uh, throne. Ella McPherson said she wanted a cap or something with the movie's logo on it. And then um, George Clooney said that he wanted Elle McPherson. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right, I gotta give. All right, I gotta give him that. Yeah, that's that's it's <laughs> definitely a George Clooney thing to say. <laughs> uh, so this is voted as number one in Empire Magazine's fifty worst movies ever. Oh, and I don't um, know about that. Yeah, I've seen plenty worse. I can see that. Yeah, I now um, if if you're talking about like big budget mo- worst movies, I would I would maybe. Because a lot of the worst movies that come to mind are kind of the lower budget ones, maybe. Yeah, like Monos, The Hands of Fate, or something. Yeah, but this, this as far as like big budget movies, sure. And if you say Waterworld, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> I think Waterworld is kind of dull. I don't <laughs> no, have anything issues with it. I think it's kind of long and boring, kind of like The Postman. It's just really funny to me because, like, we talk about bring that up all the time, and I haven't seen it so long. It probably does suck so bad. Does it hold up well? <laughs> uh, so the wrestler Jeep Swenson was who played Bane. He actually died two months after the movie came out. Oh. There must have been all that juice. Well, they did pull. Probably the plug. was it. They didn't pump him. He wasn't. That wasn't like an outfit that he was wearing. He was legit that big. Wow, that Bane too. Yeah. Oh. Like he was a he was a huge dude. Yeah. I remember he was in WCW. I saw one of his matches. Uh, I think I might have talked about it one time on here. It was uncensored WCW uncensored ninety six, I think. And they had this triple decker cage match, and it was like Hulk Hogan and a Macho Man versus like twelve people, <laughs> and. Um, Zeus and the ultimate solution, who was uh, Jeep Swenson, were in like the first cage oh, wow. that the Hulkster and Macho Man had to get past. It was a terrible match, and it's known as like one of the worst pay per views ever. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Well, Kim's right. I said maybe they should do a, if you did a top, like top movies, worst movies, it, it's, that's too generic. You know, you got to kind of go. All right, what are the top five or ten worst movies, big budgeted, big actors movies that yeah are horrible? I mean, it's just there's too many bad movies out there. So you almost got to say you know, that had a lot of actors. You paid them a lot of money that just tanked. And I'd say this one, that's this one's pretty up there. Yeah. What, what about uh, what about worst superhero movie? Oh man, I don't know Catwoman is <laughs> pretty bad. Oh yeah, true. What what was Catwoman? Uh, Halle Berry. Yeah, I would say probably for me. Like I couldn't even sit through it. I think I left. I said, "All right, I'm done." I think it was that uh, Wonder Woman, 1987 something, 88. I don't know what it was. Her yeah, second one. It was so bad. Like, like I I just left. I go, okay, I'm done. <laughs> boys just start laughing i go i'm done this is so horrible so yeah <laughs> oh yeah. man yeah i hadn't seen either of those yet so rock yeah first um, one second one, 
Yeah, so Arnold Schwarzenegger was paid $25 million. Really? For six weeks of work. Gosh. <laughs> At uh... the time, it was the biggest salary ever for a movie star. He would later beat his own record when he was paid $30 million to be in Terminator 3. <laughs> which was a lot better movie than this. Wow. So, Joel Schumacher, his first choice uh, to play Mr. Freeze was Arnold. If Arnold was unavailable, it was going to be Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> and then his third oh, choice, man. you're grown and now, his third choice was Hulk Hogan. Oh, no. He's a, if you're gonna take just a big meathead guy, it's like why don't you just get Scott Steiner to play Bane? Right, <laughs> right. Just put a mask on him. Don't have him talk. He was enormous. I mean, see, there's the whole he's trying to you play to the kids thing. You know, wrestling kids love that and yeah. things like that. And he's trying to get these people that know action stars. You know, they, those movies are going big. Yeah, I get it, but. Oh yeah, and Arnold was huge, so that's gonna bring people in. Everybody, chill, brother. <laughs> My God. Uh, so the lead dialogue mixer said that ninety-five percent of the dialogue in this film was looped. He said, "We have so much steam, prop, and other noises from the on the production track that we had to replace most of the lines." Also, in certain scenes, Arnold Schwarzenegger was difficult to hear clearly because of his costume. Uh, during the pre-dubs, he said, we pitch shift George Clooney's voice down by 5% when he appears as Batman to give it more depth and resonance and distinguish mm-hmm. the two roles. Oh, wow. So they had to make his voice deeper. I wonder what it would have sounded like normally. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, it'd hey be guys, like those, I'm Batman! It'd be like those scenes where they had... Um, the original actor who played Darth Vader reading the lines. Oh yeah! Before they put um James Earl Jones's voice over it. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Julia Roberts, Sharon Stone, Demi Moore, um, were all rumored to be in the running for the part of Poison Ivy before Uma was cast. Mm. I can see Julia Roberts. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean. He- way but yeah uma, uma didn't do terrible like no. but she also didn't do great i don't know that did anybody do great in this movie no <laughs> yeah. i think uma was trying her best but yeah she put the dialogue, forth she more effort than others pretty bad. yeah <laughs> um oh so we talked funny we talked about lost boys earlier in jo- joel schumacher uh cory Haim is actually in this movie what? He's this is briefly visible as a bike gang member at the one hour two minute mark. No, oh, that's funny. And I looked up the picture, and he's like just standing there with his arm up, yelling. And that's it. Oh, but this was a time where he was like deep into drugs. Oh, okay. He probably so, he probably would have been a better Batman or something. Uh, <laughs> better actor. <laughs> just put both Corys in it as Batman and Robin. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Oh man. And the last thing I got is this movie had a hundred twenty-five million dollar budget. Twenty-five of that going to Arnold, <laughs> and it made two hundred and thirty-eight in the box office. That's wow! Crazy. They didn't really break much, did they? No. Wow. Well, well, usually, if a movie doesn't right. double its money, it's a fail. Right, right. I guess it did, but I'm like, ugh, and yeah, that's kind of a fail if you only. You doubled your money. I don't know. Yeah. It probably networked so bad. It got around so bad that people said, if you just want to go see my, my dad always said is, and I come away, he goes, I said, is the movie bad? He goes, yeah. And I go, but it was, but was it worth the popcorn? <laughs> yeah. He'll go, no, it wasn't even worth the popcorn. I go, oh my <laughs> word, dad, that's gotta be bad. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> And he loves his popcorn, so I'm like, all right, dude. <laughs> I've only walked out of two movies in my life. Caleb and I have talked about this before. It was really? the Jim Carrey Grinch movie. Oh, man, yeah. And Muppet Treasure Island was the other one. <laughs> I walked out of one. I actually tried it 
at least two or three times try to watch this movie, this would probably be one. I, I will never watch this movie ever again. But um, it was like Johnny Mnemonic. And I, I tried so hard to watch this movie. Like I rented it and I try to watch it. I can't watch it. It's like three times I've tried to watch that movie. So, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, uh, yeah. Uh, just to wrap up the conversation, I, I'm fairly confident that there's only one that I've walked out of and that was uh hostile. Oh, yeah, I can just, see that. Oh, it yeah. was, uh, what, what, what's the phrase gore, gore porn or torture porn, yeah. torture porn. porn. There we go. Yeah. And, yeah. and, by like it wasn't even halfway through the movie, I was just like, okay, I see what they're going for here, and I don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's it for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so grades. Uh, Caleb, I pulled from IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. What are they? Uh, IMDb six point oh. Dude, it's a three point eight. <laughs> oh my gosh! Holy crap! Actually, I did. I was kind of expecting that. Um. Yeah. Anyways, that it was not going to be that. Okay. That's well deserved, right there. <laughs> that I I feel like that's fair, dude. Hard ticket to Hawaii was five. Hard ticket really? to Hawaii is amazing. Oh though. wow! And it's an only an hour and what forty minutes. Congo was a five point three. <laughs> mm. Dude, to get to the last movie that was a near this three point eight, we have to go all the way back to Birdemic. Oh my god! And this wow. is way better than Birdemic. That's well, it's it's a one point seven, but like okay, three point <laughs> three point eight, Mister Nanny. Okay, oh, yeah. this is better than Mister Nanny. Yes. Yeah. Uh, holy smokes, that's crazy. Okay, uh, Ron Tomato critic, uh, man, if we're if people are hanging on it this much, I thought like some people would give it some saving grace. Um, fifteen uh, percent. Twelve. Okay. <laughs> wow. Than the audience score, uh, audience, you probably got a little bit more fan people, so I don't know, 18 percent, uh, 16. Oh, not much, well, you're pretty close. <laughs> All right, so our grades, oh, uh, Greg, let you go first since you're the guest. Oh, um, like, oh, regular grades, I'm out, out, of, of five, out of five, yeah, out of five, oh, yeah. Out of you five. can go half points too. I'll give it a, I was gonna give it a, a two but i'm going to give it a 1.5 just because the very fact is they big budgeted and all these actors and it's and it sucked i mean the redeeming quality about this movie so so i'll give it a (laughs) 1.5 okay fair enough um i'm kind of right around there too i gave it a two because i did find it entertaining uh there was a fair amount of stuff that made me groan in it um and i mean at the end of the day it's an arnold movie and I like pretty much every Arnold movie. Uh, it's got some goofy ideas and some, I guess, if, you, if you're a kid watching this, you'd probably really like it. Um, I don't know. It's got a likable cast, but it, they're just not likable in the movie. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I thought two was fair. How about you, Caleb? Yeah, I'm... Uh... I I was kind of stuck between 1.5 and 2 because uh, I I always have the list pulled up when I'm doing my grades to kind of keep things in perspective. Um, and earlier this month, I was giving Junior and Congo both twos. And while I certainly think there are some elements of this movie that are worse, I would watch this mo- Batman and Robin before I would go back and watch Congo or Junior. Okay. So... I feel like ranking it below those two would be a little um little disservice. So I think I'm gonna land on it too as well. Nice. All right, I'll read right around two the just because I use bat nipples in it. A, a <laughs> bonus half point for Yes, for the bat nipples, yeah. I'll give for the that. Clooney butt. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh man. So um that is wrapping up our awesomely bad month, but we are going to stick around with awesomely bad stuff for next month, but we're going to go awesomely bad horror movies. Uh, we got a pretty good lineup, so next week we're going to be talking about Critters, uh, and then after that we're going to go Jaws 3, Brain Damage, Shopping Mall, and then finishing the month off with Terror Vision. 
So yep. interesting ones there, dude. Yeah, most Rock. those are all '80s ones. Rock. So, '80s '80s horror is the best horror, I think. So <laughs> yeah, if you guys are liking the show, um, please subscribe and share it. Uh, follow us on social media. We're on pretty much every platform. Uh, we're getting more stuff on TikTok. We're getting stuff on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, almost a couple times a week now. So make sure to follow us on there for any news or interesting stuff. And until then, as always, be kind and rewind.